Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at SteamOS running on the all-new Anbernek Win 600. So yeah, this is a brand new x86 handheld device to hit the market. It's powered by an AMD Athlon Silver CPU, or APU rather, because we've got that built-in iGPU. And it's capable of running Windows or a Linux variant. And for this, we're using SteamOS 3. Actually, this is Holo ISO. It's basically the same operating system that's on the Steam Deck, but we're running it on a completely different handheld here. Some people refer to this operating system as the Steam Deck OS because that's exactly what we have running over there. And if you're interested in checking out how to install this on a laptop, desktop, or even a handheld, I've created a full tutorial. Link for that is in the description. Everything's been working here, like global FSR, we can limit the frame rate in each game. I have noticed a few audio issues in a few games. It doesn't happen all the time, and I'm pretty sure it comes down to a Linux and Proton issue, so hopefully this can be ironed out in the future. But overall, it's been a really smooth experience. Updates do work with Holo ISO. We've got that performance overlay. We can get into the settings. You can go to the beta channel if you want to, access the Steam Store, and play your games right here. And we've also got access to a full desktop operating system, just like you would on the Steam Deck. Go ahead and move over there now. So yeah, I mean, if you want to use this as a desktop, you could definitely do it. And the Win 600 does have a multi-function switch over here, which basically turns our built-in controls into a mouse. And it does work with this Linux operating system, which is really cool. We've got left click, right click. We can get in here and basically open up any of our apps, or you could go ahead and plug a keyboard and mouse in, and that's exactly how I would use it with this desktop. The main reason we installed SteamOS on this handheld here is for gaming, so that's exactly what we're going to be testing, but before we move over there, I want to give you a quick rundown on the specs. The Win 600 is powered by an AMD Athlon Silver 3050E. The lower end model has the 3020E. We've got two cores, four threads, base clock of 1.4 GHz, and a boost up to 2.8. 8 GB of user-replaceable SODIMM RAM running at 2400 MHz, and this is stock. It's only single channel, so there's only one DIMM in here, but you can upgrade it to 16 running at 3200 MHz, which will help out with performance. These come with a user-replaceable 256GB 42mm M.2 SSD, 39 watt hour battery, and it's capable of running Windows or Linux. If you're interested in checking out Windows running on this, I did create a first look video. Link for that is in the description. But for this one here, we're running SteamOS, and I definitely want to see how this thing performs. One thing I've run into so far is bringing up the settings menu while you're playing a game. Now, if you have an Xbox controller connected to the Steam Deck running SteamOS, all you have to do is press the Xbox button and A at the same time, and it'll bring up the settings. Unfortunately, the Home button and the Windows button on this unit don't work in the same way. But I have not found a way to kind of map those buttons from SteamOS itself. If you got any ideas, let me know in the comments below. So we're going to jump right into some gaming here. We're going to start off light with some indie stuff, and we'll work our way up. Alright, so here's Cuphead, and there's not many settings in the game itself that we can change. I haven't enabled anything extra from the Steam menu either. But yeah, you know, this is an easier one to run. It's been on the market for a while. It's been optimized over the years. And I've had really good luck on very low-end hardware running this game at full speed. So going into it, I was pretty sure that the Win 600 was going to handle it just fine. For the next games you're going to see in the video, I will be using a wireless Xbox controller. It'll hold the console still, and I can easily get into those settings in case I need to tweak anything. Next on the list, we've got Dead Cells. I didn't have to enable anything from the menu or the settings in the game. It's just going to run at 60 on this device. Another 2D indie game that works really well on lower end hardware. And we've got one last 2D game before we move over to the 3D stuff. Shredder's Revenge. I've been playing the heck out of this lately. One of my favorite games that's released in the last few years. And really glad to see it running at full speed. But you know, the last three games that we saw aren't that hard to run. We are working with a lower end AMD Athlon chip here. So indie gaming is going to work out really well on this device. But now it's time to see how it handles 3D games. And the first one here is Dirt 3. You might notice the audio. This is exactly what I was talking about. Doesn't happen with every single game, but this is one of those games that gives me that issue, which leads me to believe it's kind of a Proton problem. But right now we're at 720p with a low medium mix, and this will run it at 60 all day. We can actually get an average of 71 FPS out of this game. I've just locked it at 60 to keep that battery draw down. And I know it's an older one, but this was one that I was sure we'd get pretty decent performance with, so I went ahead and threw it at the unit. 
Checking out Left 4 Dead 2, high settings here, obviously we're at 720p, and this will run well over 80 FPS. We can get an average of around 82 with it, not bad at all. And something like Half-Life, Portal, all of that's going to run fine. So yeah, 2D indie stuff, the older titles are going to work fine, but when I move up to some newer 3D games, that's where this thing starts to struggle, and I knew it would. I mean, it's the Athlon Silver, two cores, four threads. We've only got Vega 3 graphics here, and this is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Lowest I can go with the game, we cannot run this at 60, and we do have the option to kind of set it at 40 from the Steam settings, but when you start running these fighting games under 60, you really start to notice how slow they are. And also, with this, I do have the resolution scale as low as we can go in the settings of the game, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that variable refresh rate to 40, and we'll get back into some gameplay. Now, it will run this game at 40, but like I mentioned, with these fighting games, it's basically slow motion. And the final one we have here is The Witcher 3. We're at the lowest resolution. It's a little under 720p. Everything is set to low. I've got Bloom off. And we can get an average of around 18 FPS. And if you take a look at Mango HUD, you can see that this thing's pulling close to 25 watts. We've got that GPU totally maxed out. And that's really what's holding us back. That Vega 3 GPU only at 1000 megahertz. So yeah, the Win 600 does run SteamOS quite well. This is a great little setup for indie gaming and emulation. I'd say up to GameCube. With this setup here, it's going to be hard pressed to run a lot of the harder to run PS2 games, even with a lot of hacks on. Now there are PS2 games that this thing will handle, but I wouldn't buy it specifically for PS2. GameCube, Wii, Dreamcast, PSP, you'll be fine with this setup. My full Win 600 review will be coming up soon on the channel, so keep an eye out. And if there's any other operating systems or games you want to see tested on this, just let me know what it is in the comments below. I am planning on installing Batocera either to a USB drive or internal storage, and if you're not familiar with Batocera, it's a standalone emulation front end. Should work out pretty well here as long as I can get the resolution correct on this screen. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, it'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.